Hi, my name is Marina from Inspire Me to Be Healthy. It's my great honor to talk to Grant Campbell. Hello, Grant. Hello, Marina. For those who are not familiar with you, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Grant Campbell. I'm also known as the Raw Aussie Athlete. I'm from Australia. I run ultra marathons. I eat the 80 10 10 diet, a low fat, raw vegan, fresh fruits and vegetables diet. Mm -hmm. uh, and Since when? For how long have you been on this um, lifestyle? I started when I came across the Perfect Health Program by Dr. Graham in, uh, in November 2005. Oh, wow. So it's been eight years long. Mm -hmm. And you're thriving? Yeah, I love it. I'm just I'm setting PBs. I'm 40 years old now and I'm still setting PBs in all my races from 5K to 100 miles, you know, 24 mm -hmm. hour races. But uh, how does it come? I mean, you eat only fruits and veggies and where do, they, where do you get all that strength and fuel to run so much? Uh, uh, how, how, how is it possible? <laughs> running on fruit is like the it's the best fuel you can get. It's got it provides all your protein needs. It has all the simple sugars that you know can go straight to your cells. Oh, okay. it's low fat, so all the sugar can get straight out of your blood to your mm -hmm. cells, so you can actually start using the sugar. Oh. Um, it's really it's so you actually get your proteins from the fruits mm -hmm. oh. and and from vegetables. But yeah, I get a lot, most of my protein from fruit. Oh, okay. And what does that 80-10-10 mean, actually? For those who don't know, what is that? Well, 80-10-10, the numbers mean uh, that just, if you look at things that have calories, carbohydrates, protein, and fat, it's the ratio of those. So out of all of the calories that you eat, you don't want to have less than 80% of your calories coming from carbohydrates. And the best way to get carbohydrates is in the simple sugars from fruit. And... And the other parts is that the, t the 10 and the 10 is um, not having more than 10% of your calories, total calories coming from protein and not having 10% of your calories, not having more than 10% of your total calories coming from fat. So it's basically about saying too much protein and too much fat will mean that health decline will follow, mm -hmm. you know, to the degree that you exceed that. Uh, and, you know, you'll, you'll get the best results on having less than 10% mm -hmm. of calories coming from each of protein and fat. But... 80-10-10 is also used in other ways to, some people talk about the 80-10-10 lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is beyond just those diet. numbers and beyond the other recommendations that are covered in the book, the 80-10-10 diet, but also encompassing all the lifestyle factors that humans thrive on, which, um, which are covered by in a lot of books by people that uh, wrote about natural hygiene, mm -hmm. things like getting enough exercise, sleep, rest, um, you know, human contact mm -hmm. and emotional you know, emotional poise and healthy um, relationships yeah healthy That's relationships um, so diet obviously uh, fresh mm -hmm. air yeah water. sunshine mm -hmm. mm, and uh, what is your typical day like when it comes to your meals what do you usually eat in a day uh, my, my life changes because I travel around a lot and mm -hmm. I go to lots of different events um, but when I'm at home um, making food for myself. I usually eat twice a day. Mm -hmm. I'll eat fruit for breakfast just before like maybe 11 a.m. or something. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll wake up and I'll be active in the mm -hmm. morning and then and won't eat anything. Mm -hmm. I might drink some water mm -hmm. and then I'll eat you know sometime late morning mm -hmm. uh, a meal with you know a lot of fruit and then it could be anything. It could be bananas, it could be um, could be melons, mm -hmm. it could be, it could be Anything it depends what's in season. Could be mangoes, could be persimmons, what is custard sweet apple. In the season. Anything sweet and juicy yeah. usually wins out. Uh, and then, and then later in the afternoon, I'll have a dinner meal, which mm -hmm. will be a lot of fruit again, followed by a big salad. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That um, might be like a head of lettuce, and mm -hmm. or I might put the fruit in with the salad yeah. and eat it all together. Mm -hmm. Like crabs. Yeah. yeah, well, a concept that I really like to talk a lot is earning your food. And that's what I teach in my workshops and people who come to my retreats, they, they all know they have to earn the food at my retreats. How do you, how do you earn your food? Yeah. I know, you, can't, you just climb your tree and pick some bananas. <laughs> right, well, that's, that's yeah. one good way. And when I'm in Thailand, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I climb mangosteen trees and durian trees and, and it's really good fun. Thing. <laughs> it's really fun, but um, yeah. Usually, when I to earn my meal, I'll 
I'll, I'll just go go for a run in nature. Um, you know, I might do interval running. Mm -hmm. So I'll do like run fast from this tree to that bench, and mm -hmm. then and then do some body weight exercise like hold a plank or mm -hmm. do squats or lunges mm -hmm. or dips or push ups or burpees or whatever mm -hmm. it might be, and and just do interval running and mm -hmm. might run for an hour or I don't usually run. Um, ultra distances in mm -hmm. my training, um, but I regularly run ultra marathon, mm -hmm. uh, ultra marathons. Um, but I find my training is best focused on shorter distances and, mm -hmm. and just More good intense. quality and, and building some strength. Sometimes I do. Mm -hmm. Certain times of the year, I focus more on strength activities. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. Lifting heavy things. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, and um, maybe you could just. Uh, say in a couple of words why is it important to earn your food why is it important to be active and then eat yeah I think um, I think it's it's important to be active and then eat uh, immediately after so that you're recovered enough to, mm -hmm. to train again the next day um, because your body uh, is in a state where you can uh, sugars can get back to your cells mm -hmm. much faster in the first hour af yeah. after activity mm -hmm. So it's good to take advantage of that kind of magic window of, of getting sugar back in your body. So if you wait th you know, two or three hours after you exercise to eat, it's going to take longer to recover, mm -hmm. um, longer to get sugars back in your cell. Yeah, and you need to replenish glycogen, right? Yeah, because you, I mean, you, your yeah. cells burn sugar, mm -hmm. and you know, they also burn fat as well. But yeah. while the they're while they burn, yeah, they're always burning sugar with the fat, and um, it's yeah, you need to replace that. Mm -hmm. the, once the cells run out of glycogen, your body's yeah. got to replace those sugars before you're ready to perform again. Otherwise, you'll just feel tired and mm -hmm. won't have energy. But it's a, it's a it's a it's a healthy cycle to get into to basically you know, train, eat, sleep, repeat. Mm -hmm. It's like train, yeah. eat, sleep, train, eat, and recover, and then and then repeat that mm -hmm. cycle of basically want to overload your body mm -hmm. know, with reason with a reasonable challenge, mm -hmm. some sort of fitness challenge, and then. And then eat mm -hmm. to replace the nutrition, and then rest to yeah, recover to from recover. that. And then when you're recovered, then you can train with intensity. But if you're not recovering effectively, then your training is just going to gradually down. decline, or you'll get injuries. And mm -hmm. so it's yeah. important to it's equally important to focus on recovery as it is to as train you know, on the quality of your training. And what was so far the the longest distance that you ran at once? The longest distance that I've run is 175.3 kilometers oh, in wow. a race last November called the Great North Walk Hundreds uh, mm -hmm. in, in Australia that goes from along the Great North Walk which is a 250 kilometer trail from Newcastle to Sydney oh, wow. and uh, it does most of that trail. Mm, and it must be beautiful. It's through the mountains, line. it's a beautiful trail. Uh, it took me 34 hours, 21 minutes. Did you have any food with you? A little bit. I, uh, I ate during that race. Uh, so over the 34 hours, 175 kilometers, I ate 18 kilos or 40 pounds of mango. Oh. <laughs> and from that, from those mango alone, I got 14 liters of water. Um, mm -hmm. And I drank 10 liters of water. Mm -hmm. So I got more water from my food than I drank. And that was it's, getting water from your food is a really good idea. It makes it so convenient. Yeah. And I ate two heads of celery, mm -hmm. and I had about 20, I had 50 kadrawi dates, which were very small, mm -hmm. so about the equivalent of 25 medjool dates. Okay. That was all I ate, and it was the best race food I'd ever had. Excellent. Um, mango is just because it's mango is sweet enough to replace <laughs> the sugars that you're yeah. burning, um, and it's juicy, so it's yeah. replacing water that you're losing. And it's just so delicious. I, mm. Even though I was eating mangoes for 34 hours, I never got sick of it. It was always a delight to eat. Whereas if I tried to race that, I long, know how you feel. I, I I think that I could never, never, never get a, get sick of mangoes. There's yeah, especially when they're really good mangoes. Yeah, honey. But uh, if I try to race like that on just dates, mm -hmm. at some point I get sick of it's 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 De too dehydrating. It's dehydrating. They're not juicy enough usually if I don't have really fresh dates. Yeah. And, and and just eventually it's kind of almost just too much sugar yeah uh, you don't process them as well as mango it's the nutritional package in a mango of you know the exactly. vitamins and minerals and enzymes and antioxidants and fiber and water and, and carbs fat and protein all like in this 
bundle of delicious <laughs> joy. Uh, it's just delightful to mm-hmm. get to it when I get to a checkpoint every four or, four or five hours in that race and I just get more mangoes. It's, uh, <laughs> it's still worth running, right? Indeed. Yeah, and you also fasted one year with Dr. Douglas Graham. How long did you fast? I fasted on just water for 29 days. Mm-hmm. Was it hard? Was it hard? Uh, oh. I didn't find it hard, actually. I was there for all the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really was comfortable with what I was doing. I had complete confidence that I was doing all the right things. And Do you um, think was, you, 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 get, you got a lot of benefits from that? Um, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Profound benefits. Um, mostly... There were physical benefits, like uh, I did a 100k race um, three years in a row mm-hmm. and uh, through mountains and it took me um, it took me 21 and a half hours the first year and I'd, and I'd done it a few years before that mm-hmm. as well and this was on a cooked vegan diet okay. and it took me 22 hours a year before but I was kind of getting the same results year to year and then I got into the 80-10-10 diet and then did the race again that next year and I did it two and a half hours faster, oh, wow. 19 hours, and I hadn't changed my training. And just then, the diet. Just the diet. And then I fasted mm-hmm. the, a few months mm-hmm. after the race, and then six months, uh, and, then, and then the fast took you know, 29 days, and then there was a recovery period. Of when I broke the fast, six months later was the mm-hmm. time for the race again, and I did it another two and a half hours faster. I did it in 16 and a half hours. So oh, in wow. two years, by 80, 10, 10 yeah. and fasting, um, you improved for and the other about fact, the other factor, hours. the other factor that I attribute that change to, because I didn't change my training. Mm-hmm. In fact, I was training less in, and the, in that second more. year and got you know, so I took off five hours through yeah. eighty ten ten, applying eighty ten ten diet, fasting, and also getting more sleep. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that, that's three things. That's vital, I think. So all total life, lifestyle things. Yeah. Nothing to do with the training. Yeah. And no magic pills. No pills, supplements. No, no or supplements. Yeah. No. Grant is organizing retreats. Would you just like to say something about your retreats? Sure. Um, on Invite people? Yeah, on, on rawaussieathlete.com, which is my website. Uh, there's details of retreats that I run. I run a retreat each year in Australia uh, for a long weekend, and uh, usually in November. And uh, just like healthy lifestyle principles where we have discussions and... Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, obviously make raw, raw plant-based mm-hmm. uh, 80 10, 10 style foods and so people learn and get hands-on experience making those foods and we, um, yeah, we share, have a lot of discussions, what, um, watch some good videos. DVDs, mm-hmm. videos about um, important information, healthy lifestyle sort of information, we have discussions about those. Mm-hmm. We get to share things that, um, mm-hmm. issues that people are having with health or whatever and, and, and it's just really nice to be in that supportive environment um, where everyone can kind of learn from each other and share, and uh, you know, and I share a lot of, you know, of the experiences that I've picked mm-hmm. up over the year, over the years. But and also, I run a retreat in Thailand um, each year, usually late April, early May. And it goes for two weeks, and that's that's incredible. It's right in <coughs> peak season, uh, peak fruit season mm-hmm. in uh, in Thailand, and we got a, you know, beautiful waterfalls and beaches and. We do a cruise down a river from the from the town to the ocean. It's it's just beautiful, and mm-hmm. we we visit temples, and mm-hmm. it includes Thai massage every day. Oh wow! <laughs> um, yeah. It uh, all the food is included, accommodations included. Um, mm-hmm. And people food. can register through your website. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put the link under under this video. And you are also a director of education at Food and Sport, right? That's correct. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Marina. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.